Now is the time to go ahead and safety wire out our flywheel main shaft crankshaft bolts that go through that holds everything all together. We've torqued them down to what we to to what we like as far as the spec goes. Uh, remember, there are no real torque specs. Henry Ford just had a wrench that happened to be the right length that fit the job, but uh, you are putting a bolt into cast iron, so be kind of gentle with it, but you can run them down pretty hard. Uh, they're cross-drilled, and the safety wire needs to be installed in such a fashion that the bolt tried to back out, which is going to be counterclockwise in this, in this uh, application, that it would pull against the wires. So I see a likely looking spot here. I've got a set of holes that are lined up to allow me to do that. Yeah, I'll just do it from the top side. Get my safety wire pulled through there. Pair of needle nose and grab a hold of it. Okay, and I want that. Wrapped around the head of the bolt and through the bolt in such a position that when it tries to back out of there, it's going to pull against the wire that's going to go over here to the other um, bolt. And these are real handy wire pliers, twists or whatever, uh, aerospace things. You can get this through the uh, Home Master. I did that wrong. <laughs> I sure did. So that's got one set, one set of them wired up. Uh, some people will just run a wire all the way through it. I've seen it, seen it done all different kinds of ways. Uh, hell, I've even seen lock washers in there, and I've seen nothing at all uh, bolt stretch. Uh, but uh, this pulls it back kind of like what Henry wanted, it's some kind of a safety wire in it. So we've got the other side to wire up, and. Then we'll move on to installing the front plate. A brief discussion on front plates. Uh, this is a pre-19 engine, so it didn't have a generator. So uh, the appropriate front plate would be this style that doesn't have the uh, mounting for the generator. Uh, we have a couple here. One's been powder coated. and. What I'd like to show here is there are differences on where you'd put your put your seal uh, in the in the gasket kits that you buy from the vendors. Uh, they supply you with some felt that goes in there. I like to use a modern rope seal. It's a Teflon coated rope seal. Uh, this you can buy directly off the vendors, and it's a bigger diameter and it would fit inside this one that's uh, 
that's uh, bigger, uh, bigger. But uh, that would be a little difficult getting that big rope in. So I've got some smaller rope seal that I can drive in there to uh, to install. Okay. Uh, my preference is the modern seals. The felts work. Uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, of the modern seal that you could slide over the crankshaft and then install in here with some RTV. The reason I'm not a fan of that is if you ever had to take the front plate off, you'll destroy that metal seal trying to get it out of there because the cam is sticking through here and it, it just wouldn't come off. So at that point, if you ever had to take it off, lost the timing gear or something, whatever the reason was, you went back into it. This seal, while a lot of people think it's a good idea, uh, turns out to be more of a nuisance because uh, if you destroy it, you got to take the pan off to get it replaced. So uh, why do it? Just uh, these work out quite well. Some people like to glue a modern seal on the front with a little RTV. Uh, that seems to work. Uh, so you've got some choices. It's just whatever you prefer doing. But front plates, uh, uh, early pre-19, won't we'll have a generator. Uh, housing on it. Uh, this is a 2627 front plate. Uh, doesn't have the Moss uh, fan fan arm adjustment on it because the fan was actually mounted up on the on the head. So there are differences on these. Uh, there's a couple more uh, differences in these things, but this is just what I have here for an example. We're also going to use a modern seal for our cam. And that will press down in there after we've got the front plate on. Some of the very early ones uh, have a shoulder on both sides and you would pack that felt seal into it and that's fine if that's what you want but I found that I could center up on these and just machine this out to where it would accommodate a modern seal. So you have options as to what you can do uh, but if you've got the lips and you don't want to uh, remove that area um, you have to use a felt seal or go find a front plate that's later where you can install one. So it's your choices, it's your car, it's your engine, you can do you can do what you want with that. Another tool that I have up here is a copy of a KR Wilson, I believe. Yeah, KRW. Uh, uh, alignment tool where when we get that front plate on the engine, we want to make sure that this slides over the cam and that that front plate is centered on that cam. If you just put it on here without any way of centering it, it'll be off center one side or the other. And if you're running a timer on it, rather than a distributor, it's going to give you some skips. It's, it's not centered, so it'll wear out the timer, wear out the roller quicker or the brushes because of it being off center and cause you some ignition problems later down the road. So this is a handy little tool. Uh, you can buy these from the vendors. Or if you have a lathe, you can make your own. It's, it's not a big, but big deal. Uh, there's also another version of this that's just made out of a chunk of aluminum. I don't know what the price of this one is, but uh, you, e either tool would work good. You don't necessarily need the reproduction one. There's another one that's just a, basically a piece of aluminum. But they're very handy for lining up the front plate. So we're going to go ahead and finish. This is the front plate that we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and clean it up and coat it with a little uh, sealer on the inside and uh, maybe spray the outside with a with a primer coat and the next thing that we're going to put on our engine would be the front plate assembly with the with the crankshaft seal and install and install our uh, crankshaft seal in our front plate and that will all force down in there but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my hammer and just kind of flatten it out just a little bit. And start that down in there. And I've got a socket and I'm just going to seat it in a little bit. I'm not, don't want to collapse it too much. Oops. Just almost collapsed too much there. We'll start over. Yeah. Knock it in, then I'm 
just going to take a box knife and I'm going to cut off the excess. And this one I'll just cut flush. And on the pan I'll leave that gasket a little proud to where it comes up and really pushes against this. But that ought to be good enough to get our seal on our crankshaft. It's still quite proud. And when we draw that up and hold it in place, it's going to crush that down a little bit more. So, we're okay, well, so we've installed our uh, modern rope seal for the crankshaft. There's a paper gasket that goes between the plate and the block. Uh, some people don't use the paper gasket and just run a, uh, put a, a sealer, a silicone or TV type sealer. Uh, I prefer using the gasket. I also would run a bead of sealer. Uh, uh, your, your choice, whatever you like. Uh, everybody probably has their own idea of what works best, but there's a variety of uh, gasket sealers. Uh, this engine we're putting together for this presentation is going to be used on additional presentations, so I'm not going to seal it all up because we're going to have it back and forth several times. Uh, sometimes these gaskets are all folded up and kinked and pink. You can soak that gasket in the water, lay down a piece of newspaper and kind of put it into the shape that it want, wants to go, put another piece of newspaper over it, put a little weight on it and it'll draw the moisture out of it and it'll make the gasket a little easier to, uh, to put on there. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get this together dry, which might be interesting because the sealer normally would hold the gasket somewhat in place. And I'll get this rascal started. And like I said, I'll repeat it again, just so everybody knows. I would normally have sealer in here at this time. And I might be able to get one more started here. No, I don't think so. Okay, so got one bolt started and the front plate needs to come up and get all centered up with our little KR Wilson tool. It needs to seat off down where the timer would normally set and be on it. As you can see, it's not quite there, okay? So I found it's easy for me. Your, your, your mileage may vary, but I've just got a couple of blocks of steel here. And I'll go ahead and clamp that on. take a C clamp and just for some pressure. Oh, another thing that I would have done prior to putting the funk plate on is I took this little grease of your choice and a brush and I would rotate the crankshaft around and smear a little grease on it and the timing gear and I would also make sure that I had greased up my modern uh, rope seal there. But again, we're taking this thing a lot apart and putting it back together, so I don't want to do that. And my paper gasket slipped a little bit on me, so loosen that up. that bolt started in there.
so I snug that up. It'll pull it. And I got a tap on it just a little bit because it's not centered up. My alignment tool hasn't really fit yet. Oops. There it goes. So now you see that knocked all my bolts out. But now the camshaft alignment tool is centered on the plate. And I can start my bolts. And that one I'm going to have to get here in a moment. So I'll go ahead and snug these down. And I gotta remove this clamp here so I can get this one started. Paper gasket may be interfering a little bit. We'll see. Oh, it's there. Yep. 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 tool fits on our front plate goes into its seat so if we've got our front plate installed it's all flush square if it was sealed up it would be on there permanent so that's how I install a front plate a modern uh, cam seal and I had previously checked to make sure that it fits the hole and it's going to uh, seat in uh, sometimes these holes are a little larger and a little smaller uh, and sometimes it's necessary to uh, put this into your, you, can, you can expand this by putting it in a vise with a couple of flat jaws and just squeezing it just a little bit it'll mushroom it out to where it'll fit into place but I like to put a little lube on the seal surface and get a little wipe of something around the cam nut. That's what it seals on. And then it's a matter of pressing that, put, put, putting that into place and a little small thin bladed screwdriver with a little pressure on it as you push it past and force the lips of the of the seal to where it'll start dropping into place. Oops, I missed it. There we go. There we go. Starting to go now. Yeah, I got it wedged in there too far. Start over. Uh, could take maybe a piece of shim stock and wrap around that and force it on. And generally this goes fairly easy. Just keep working it down. light right here but I think I got it.
believe I have it all gone past it. Just get a socket that's close to the right size, and I'm just going to see if I can start it in there. Yeah, make sure that the rubber lip didn't extend on out. Let's go ahead and try that home. So that's our modern cam seal installed in the front plate.